Hi, I'm Brian Weisfeld, the co-author of the Startup Squad book series. We are so excited that the next book in the series, Party Problems, comes out on May 4th. And to celebrate, we're going to read you the first chapter. I'm going to read you the first page, and then I'm going to be joined by some amazing girlpreneurs who are each going to take their turn to read a page and tell you a little bit about their business. Ready? Here we go. Party Problems, page one. Don't move, Dee Dee called to Harriet. She'd been adjusting Harriet's position for five minutes, and now, at long last, it was perfect. Harriet leaned against the big oak tree in Dee Dee's backyard, her knees drawn up and her hands behind her head. Dee Dee was ready to sketch her. Harriet was a fantastic model. Her big, bold expressions made her fun to draw, and her body language was always interesting. But she seemed incapable of sitting still, even for a minute. Case in point, as soon as Dee Dee put pencil to paper... Harriet jumped up and ran over to peer over Dee Dee's shoulder. I just want to see how it's going, Harriet frowned. No offense, Dee, but it doesn't look like me at all. Yeah, because I haven't even started, Dee Dee said. The page was blank except for an oval for Harriet's face, a neck, and the beginning of shoulders. Can you try to sit exactly the way I had you? Sure thing, boss, Harriet saluted her, and Dee Dee had to laugh. Harriet could be exasperating, but she was impossible to stay mad at. No sooner had Harriet assumed her tree-leaning, head-tilted, Mona Lisa smile posture, she let out a howl. Ah! Harriet screamed as a tennis ball bounced off her forehead. She grabbed her head and threw herself onto the grass, rolling back and forth. I'm bleeding, she yelled. Am I bleeding? Risa and Amelia jogged over from where they'd been practicing volleys in Dee Dee's driveway. Amelia grabbed the tennis ball and leaned over to exa examine Harriet's head. Sorry, Harriet, she said, but I think you're okay. The good news is that your backhand is killer, Amelia, said Risa, smiling. The bad news is, I mean that literally. It's a work in progress, said Amelia, like your teaching skills. I need ice, Harriet moaned, to control the swelling. I'll get some, Amelia offered. And some more iced tea, Harriet went on. I'm parched. Coming up, said Dee Dee, closing her sketchbook. The portrait ses session was obviously over. Maybe she'd try again next Sunday. Dee Dee grabbed the empty pitcher from the table on the patio and opened the screen door that led into the kitchen. Amelia followed behind her. Didn't get too far with the portrait, huh? asked Amelia. I mostly just needed to get a rough human figure for this design I'm working on, said Dee Dee. But yeah, I didn't even make it to the elbows. Elbows are overrated, said Amelia. If I could download Picture House, it wouldn't be a problem, said Dee Dee. I would just upload a picture of Harriet, and then I could trace what I needed in like two seconds. Dee Dee pulled an ice cube tray from the freezer and overturned it onto a plate, releasing an abundance of ice cubes. That sounds like a cool app, Amelia said. You should get it. Dee Dee dropped ice cubes into the picture. I would, Dee Dee said, but the subscription is super expensive. She pulled out a large plastic container full of tea from the fridge and poured it over the ice. The screen door creaked and Harriet staggered in, collapsing in the kitchen chair. How bad is the bump? She asked the girls. Be honest, scale of one to ten. I told her it was zero, Ressa said, trailing behind her. She doesn't believe me. Here, Amelia handed Harriet a Ziploc bag full of ice. This should help. This too, Dee Dee placed a fresh glass of iced tea with extra honey to satisfy Harriet's sweet tea. Then she filled a glass bowl with tea crackers and placed it in the middle of the table. Dee Dee's mother believes in good manners, and she taught Dee Dee that when guests come over, you always offer food, even if it was only cheese crackers. Hey Dee Dee, said Amelia, filling her own glass with tea. Maybe the picture house has a student discount. You should check. They do, said Dee Dee. Even with that, it costs $114 a year. Amelia whistled. Steep. It's less than the price of a guitar, said Ressa, taking a long drink of the icy cold tea. That is a true but random fact, said Amelia. Not random, corrected Riza. When we sold Skinks merch, we made enough in one week to pay for a new electric guitar and drums for the band. Yeah, and the boys still won't let me come into their room, Harriet pouted, which makes me seriously regret handing over all that money to them. I should have given it to my mom to pay for a new salon chair. Dee Dee handed the girls coasters to put under their glasses. What's wrong with your mom's salon chair, Dee Dee asked, sitting down next to Harriet. What isn't wrong with it, Harriet asked. The seat part hasn't gone up or down for years, and then the boys were playing hockey in the basement and broke off one of the armrests. Plus, Zappa, Dee Dee stuttered. Even the mention of that reptile's name brought back the feeling of Zappa's cold body on her head. 
A few weeks before, when Dee Dee was at Harriet's house, the pet skink had made a great escape and taken a wrong turn into Dee Dee's long brown hair. What did Zappa do this time? Amelia laughed. She's pulled out the stuffing inside the seat, Harriet exclaimed. There's hardly any left. It's her favorite game now. You could keep her in a cage, suggested Risa with raised eyebrows. Would you keep Stella in a cage? Harriet replied. Stella was Risa's schnauzer, a sweet and devoted dog that Harriet, a natural animal lover, was very fond of. No, but Stella doesn't eat salon chairs and get tangled in people's hair, Risa pointed out. Well, it's too late now anyway, said Harriet. The chair's a goner and she needs a new one so she can see clients in the basement and they're expensive. I could use some cash too, said Amelia, tossing a cheese cracker into her mouth. I'm visiting my dad back in the city next month. Dee Dee was intrigued. Amelia didn't talk about her dad much. All Dee Dee knew was that Amelia had moved to town a few months earlier when her mom got a job as the editor of the local paper and that her dad had stayed behind. He'd visited a few times for the weekend, but Dee Dee hadn't met him yet. I'm going clothes shopping with my old friends and there's a concert we want to see and a makeup store that just opened, Amelia sighed. I need spending money and I'm broke. Me too, said Risa, which is really bad timing because Bounce Back is having its annual fundraiser. I always donate, every year. I can't break the tradition now. Bounce Back, asked Amelia. It's a charity, Risa explained. They give tennis rackets to kids who can't afford one. I'm the president of the local chapter. That's such a cool idea, said Amelia. If I had any money, I'd donate. Look at us, Harriet's, Harriet said glumly. She shoved a handful of crackers into her mouth and chomped. Just four broke girls. We make money for everyone else. Our school, the skinks. But when we need money, who helps us? Risa paused on the verge of popping a cracker into her mouth. We do, she said. We do what? Harriet asked. We help ourselves. Risa turned to the other girls, getting excited. If we need money, we'll just start up the startup squad again. And do what? Dee Dee pushed her tortoiseshell eyeglasses up to the bridge of her nose. Another concert? Risa shook her head. Those Skinks fans are way too much drama. And so are the Skinks. I know exactly what we should sell! Harriet nearly jumped out of her chair. I have the perfect idea for a Skink toy. I just said we shouldn't do band merch, said Risa. Not Skinks the band, said Harriet, smiling. Skinks the Skinks. Are you understanding this? Teresa asked Amelia. Remember how I said Zappa loves pulling the stuffing out of my mom's salon chair? Harriet asked. Well, I figured she was bored, so I tried to get her to stop by buying her a skink chew toy. I thought she liked something hard on the outside but soft on the inside, like the salon chair. And there's nothing. It doesn't exist. If we made one, we'd make a fortune. A skink chew toy? asked Risa, who was struggling to hide her skepticism. How many people even own skinks? Four million, said Harriet, give or take. Amelia was typing on her phone and scrolling through the results of her web search. Um, not quite, she said. I found the National Skinks Owner Society and it has, she looked up, 20 members. You know what there are a lot of though, Marissa chimed in? People who want to learn tennis, especially in this town. That's true, said Amelia. In the city, I barely even played table tennis, but here it's the thing to do. And private lessons cost a fortune. Risa went on, it's a total ripoff, $75 an hour for someone who is served as mediocre at best. They're expensive, all right. Amelia agreed. I could charge a lot less and teach people a lot more, Risa concluded. People would line up all around the block to hire me. We'd be rolling in money. Uh, said Amelia. What? said Risa, crossing her arms on, in front of her. You don't think I'm good at tennis? Oh, I think you're good at tennis, said Amelia. I just don't know how good you are at teaching. Dee Dee's shoulders tense. She hated when people argue, especially two of her good friends. Risa and Amelia have been getting along a lot better lately. In fact, they seem to become close. Still, they both could be stubborn and occasionally clash. Dee Dee was always on high alert for these moments. I am a great teacher, Risa protested. I push hard and the payoff is huge. Right, said Amelia. It's just the fun part that's missing. Dee Dee offered the bowl of cheese crackers to Risa and said, when I'm with you, the fun part is never missing. Thanks, Dee. Rhea, Risa smiled and then turned to Amelia. So I guess you have a better idea. I've got something in mind, said Amelia. It's cooking. Cooking, Risa asked, eyebrows raised. Yeah, cooking, said Amelia. 
Not ready yet. I don't want to serve you undercooked ideas. Dee Dee laughed. Please don't. But let me ask you all a question. Amelia tucked her hair behind her ears, even though it was already perfectly in place. When you're on Image Fest and you see influencers advertising products, is it annoying? Oh, you mean like how Carly Key posted this morning about that gross power drink? Harriet made a revolted face. I tried that stuff a while ago when Sam was drinking it, trying to bulk up for football. Dee Dee laughed at the thought of Harriet's skinny, not very coordinated older brother playing football. First of all, it was the most disgusting beverage I've ever tasted, said Harriet. And second of all, it didn't even work. If anything, Sam got skinnier and had less energy. It was a scam. So you did mind when Carly Key posted about it, Amelia was confused. Harriet shook her head. No, that video she made was totally hilarious. Yeah, and it was obvious it was an ad, said. Risa, the part where she was like, I feed it to my tigers had me rolling. Harriet cracked up. Her two high ponytails shook like pom-poms as she laughed. What I don't like is when celebrities try to act like it's not an ad, said Dee Dee, because then it feels like a lie, like you're being tricked. Right, said Amelia, nodding. Why, asked Risa. You thinking of becoming an influencer? Definitely not, said Amelia. Okay, so we got zero ideas from Amelia then. And Risa, a chew toy for the least popular pet in America. Objection, your honor, protested Harriet. Sustained, Dee Dee replied, laughing. And my idea, said Risa, coaching lessons for tennis players that they can actually afford. You forgot Dee Dee, Amelia pointed out, turning to her friend. What do you have? Dee Dee knew she wanted to build a side business around her art someday after college, but that was as far as she had taken the idea. Right in the moment, she had no genius plan for a business. She felt, as she often did when the other girls convened, that they moved forward with their plans so quickly she hardly had a chance to catch up, much less lead the way. She knew she could figure out a solid business idea, but she needed time to think it through. I've got something cooking too, she said. It's simmering. Well, turn up the heat, Ressa encouraged her. We need a fully cooked idea. Easy for Ressa to say, she was fast about everything. She'd already drained her glass of iced tea and eaten most of the cheese crackers in the bowl. Now she was on her feet, spinning the tennis racket in her hand. Come on, Amelia, she said. I'm declaring a state of emergency for your backhand. We've got to fix it before it actually knocks someone unconscious. Amelia got to her feet but raised her eyebrow at Harriet and Diddy. See what I mean? Hey, Diddy, said... Harriet, instead of a portrait against a tree, what about a portrait of me eating that slice of pizza I saw in your fridge? How about we keep the pizza, lose the portrait? Asked Dee Dee with a smile. Harriet sighed with relief. With, with relief. I thought you'd never ask.